going guys? Now, you'll notice I'm driving an 80 series here and I'm also smiling like a chimp because I'm absolutely stoked at the moment. And no, it's not Sooty Mark II in case you're wondering, I've got that back on the road, not yet. But me being me, I've gone and bought another 80 series. You see, there was a bargain that was just too good to pass up. So I've just gone, done a 10 hour round trip to go buy another secondhand 80 series. Now this one here, look, it's, it's a dream four-wheel drive of mine for so many reasons. This is what I'd call the unicorn of 80 series cruisers. Now this one here is a 1995 model, 1HD FT. So it's a multi-valve, it's the 24-valve factory turbo diesel 80 series. I picked it up at an absolute bargain and it was almost too good, well, was too good to sort of pass up. So I've driven up, bought the vehicle, and um, I thought, heck, I may as well show you exactly what I bought, the new Land Cruiser that's gonna be uh, going into my shed. And um, more importantly though, there's so many guys out there who wanna find a good bargain. And this day and age, it's so hard to come across a really good quality secondhand used vehicle, especially with the high Ks on it. So I thought I'd show you what I've bought, the reasons why I bought it, and hopefully I'll be able to pass on a few tips to you guys as well. So you can hopefully buy the full drive of your dreams, get a used bargain, and more importantly, know what to look for so you don't get ripped off. <laughs> How cool is this? Now, my dog Mia and myself, we just drove 10 hours to go pick this thing up. And um, look, I was not in the market for an 80 series, but when this one came up, and especially an FT model 80, I just knew I had to get it, especially the price I got it for. So the big question you're probably wondering, what did I pay for this 80 series? Now, here we go. I paid $15,000 for this 80. Now, in today's day and age, that is an absolute bargain because these things, you know, they range from, you know, between about that sort of price up to, I've seen them over $30,000 for this exact sort of one, but obviously in a bit better condition. Now, you gotta keep in mind, this does have half a million Ks on it and needs a little bit of work, but nothing that's, you know, that I can't do myself. So let me pop the bonnet and I'll show you around this thing. And um, as you can see, you might not be able to tell, but the paint's actually really faded. Um, there's a few mechanical things that need to happen, but at the end of the day, the big ticket items are in good nick. I'm talking about the engine, the auto, um, a lot of that sort of stuff. So that's that's what you want to look for when you're buying an old vehicle, especially with you know so many Ks on it like this one here. But let me pop the bonnet and we'll show you around. So first things first, let's talk about the engine because at the end of the day, that's the big ticket item. These things cost an absolute fortune if you need to find yourself in a situation where you need to rebuild it. Um, thank goodness, this one's in good health. And even though I said that the whole vehicle has about half a million Ks on it, the engine's got about 400,000 Ks on it because there's a bit of a story behind it. Um, the bloke who owned this vehicle before me, he actually purchased it from Toyota. And um, I'm actually the second owner of this vehicle. So the bloke knows absolutely everything, all the history about this vehicle. In fact, he's got all the receipts, um, all the user manuals, all that sort of jazz. Um, probably more paperwork I've ever seen in an old secondhand vehicle. It was his pride and joy, remember. Now, at 100,000 Ks, when he just sort of bought this, this vehicle, um, when he took it back to Toyota, one of the mechanics stuffed something up. They, the towing belt skipped off as he was driving it and um, it lunched the motor. So under warranty, this motor was actually replaced 100,000 into the life of the motor. So it was replaced under warranty. Um, so it's very fresh, it's only done 400,000, which seems like a lot, but in if a turbo diesel has been serviced regularly, which this one has, um, that's actually not too old for an old um, Toyota turbo diesel. They'll go half a million plus every day of the week. In fact, they'll do six, seven, 100, even up to a million K, some of these motors. That's why they're so legendary. Uh, the second thing you need to look out for, I'll show you. So the second thing you need to look out for on the motor is the fuel pump. Now with a turbo diesel, the fuel pumps are very expensive. Now, if the fuel pump goes, and let's face it, they, they sort of need replacing maybe every sort of 300 to 400,000 Ks, um, which in this case, this, this vehicle of this age, you'd be thinking things like injectors and fuel pump need to be done, but not in the case of this one, because one of the things that was actually quite attractive about buying this vehicle is the fuel pump had just been done probably about 12 months ago and um, cost the old bloke about three and a half thousand dollars, maybe even more to do fuel pump and, and a few bits and pieces like that. So I know that that's pretty fresh. I know the engine's fresh. So the next big thing you wanna look out for is the automatic transmission. Um, if it was a manual, you wouldn't have to worry too much about it, but autos, especially older autos, can be a little bit finicky. And um, the biggest problem is heat. Now you can, you can usually test by just pulling the dipstick out. And if it smells burnt and the fluid's not very good, well, there's a good chance that the thing has been cooked before and it might be on its last legs. In the case of this particular vehicle, it's been overhauled probably about a year and a half ago as well. So um, that's great for me because that means I probably don't need to touch that auto for a while. 
And here's the other thing as well. I've just been driving this for a good five hours straight. I mean, I've been doing 110 on the freeway. I've even got a fair bit of traffic as well that I got caught in Brisbane. And this thing has not overheated. Nothing's gone wrong. It's been changing gears perfectly. The engine's great. It stops and starts. All the stuff you need a vehicle to do. So I know it's in really good health. Now, here's a couple of little tips I want to give you guys as well. When you're looking for a secondhand vehicle, there's a couple of telltale um, things to look for. Because number one, the first thing you'll notice, it's very clean engine bay. Now that can be easily be degrees and there's, I wouldn't pay too much attention on just how clean the engine bay is because it's easy enough to steam clean all the rest of it. You can make it look brand new even if you've got an old second hand vehicle. Um, of course this one's in good nick for good reason. It probably is in good nick. There's, there's a couple of other telltale signs. Firstly, this is original. This cover right here is original. And as you can see, there's no tears in it. It's not covered in mud. These are usually one of the first things to go if um, these insulation pads, if the vehicle's been treated pretty rough. If uh, fan belts go and things like that, you get huge big gashes out of here. They start to fall apart pretty easy. If you do a lot of water crossings and things like that, lots of mud, these will be second hand in absolutely no time. The other thing to look out for as well is the grommets on the vehicle. To see how many aftermarket accessories have been fitted. Has it been played with a heck of a lot? Now this one, one of the things I like about it, it's grandpa spec. It's pretty much got zero modifications on it. Some real basic stuff and you can tell they've been done quite a while ago because they're old school mods, like the old um, halogen spotlights and um, it's got the big alloy bar and things like that. But if you look carefully, there's not a big mess of wires. That's because nothing's really been done to this vehicle. It's very much stock standard, which I like about this vehicle. The, the grommets on the firewall, uh, as you can see, haven't had many aftermarket wires poked through. They're all in original condition all the way through the engine bay here. And it really tells a bit of a story about the previous history of this truck. And um, I like the fact that it hasn't been touched and it doesn't have any mods on it. So that's a good thing. Right, well that's enough in the engine bay. Let's have a quick look underneath. Hey you going folks, I hope you're enjoying the episode. I won't take up too much of your time. I just wanted to remind you about some of the cracking deals we've got going at fulldrive247.com right now. You can save up to 15% on selected snatch items. There's also big savings to be made on snatch recovery bundles. Raptor have got 20% off their entire range. And right now you can save yourself 80 bucks on a throttle controller from Ultimate 9. Ain't gonna last, it never does. Where do you get it? Only one place. 4WheelDrive247.com So when you do jump under a vehicle that's done quite a few Ks like this one, there's a couple of things you need to look out for. Now the first thing is just a general observation. Um, just have a quick look around and as you can see, one of the things a lot of people do when they're selling old rigs is to get some um, rattle cans out and just spray paint the whole lot black. Now the first thing I do when I see that, it looks nice and shiny. If you don't know, if you don't know what you're looking for, you'll think, heck, it's in really good nick. But what actually is probably happening is the person who's trying to sell it is trying to mask up a couple of problems. As you can see under here, I mean, there's been basically no effort to clean anything, which is great because no one's trying to hide anything. And you can actually see all the dramas you've got to deal with. You've got to keep in mind, this is an old vehicle, done nearly half a million Ks. Um, first thing I noticed, the swivel hubs are on both sides, they're actually, that one might have done an axle seal as well, but they're, they're, they're weeping a fair bit. There's a huge build up through here, which shows me that I'm going to have to replace the swivel hubs. And while I'm there, probably the bearings as well. I don't know when they were last done um, and have a general look inside. The spindles might be worn. I might be up for new brakes, rotors. Um, so straight off the bat there, there's a couple of grand's worth of um, maintenance items I need to do under this vehicle. The other thing I've just noticed as well, and um, when I bought it, which is not a big deal, but it's leaking a little bit of oil and I think it's a rear main. Um, it's got a little bit of oil up the front there as well. I'll give this a good degrees when I get home and actually see exactly what's going on. But it's pretty mild at the end of the day. There's a couple of likely spots. I mean, if this thing was coated in oil underneath and was just hemorrhaging out, um, there'd be big dramas. But I've just driven it for five hours. I've checked the oil. It's not leaking much at all. It's just some maintenance things. Now, the other thing you want to look for when you get underneath a vehicle is try and get an idea of what sort of life it's had before you've got the keys to it. So the first thing I do is look for sort of beach work. Has this thing done a lot of beach work? Um, I can have a look around. I can see not much corrosion, all the nuts and bolts under here. It looks pretty fresh, you know, for an old vehicle. It looks really, really good. Now, if I look under here, there's no scrape marks in anything. This thing has, you know, it's probably the toughest four-wheel driving it's ever done has been in a Woolies car park. No joke, there's no scrapes whatsoever on the diffs, on, on the radius arms here, the side steps of those original Toyota factory aluminium ones, which bend as soon as you look at them, and they're nice and flat as well. So it shows that this thing has not had a hard life at all. Oh, that's pretty good. 
unis aren't flogged. Yeah, you know, even the old exhaust has got no dints in it. All the trailing arms, no, no scratches and scrapes on them. No oil coming out the diff or anything like that. The bushes are in reasonable nick. These, you get lots of sand up in here. If if you get a hose and stick it up into there, if you get sand come out, that's a good telltale sign. There's a little bit of oil coming out the back of the transfer case, but you know, there's a little leak somewhere around there, but it doesn't seem too bad. It's not dripping or hemorrhaging out. It's just, I need to give it a good degrease and see where any of the oil's coming out of, but it's just, it's got, you know, 25 years worth of grime underneath this vehicle and stuff like that, because not many people get under here on a regular basis and start degreasing it, but overall, it's pretty darn good. When it comes to the paintwork, I guess there's no surprises about that, but um, all the clear coat has faded pretty much around the whole vehicle, which tells me it's been parked outside in the sun for most of its life. This is pretty common on many vehicles of this age, you know. You've got to keep in mind, it's what it's about a, about a 25, 28-year-old vehicle, and um, clear coat's all gone on the roof, on the bonnet, all around the vehicle. So look, one day, it'd be lovely to maybe respray this, bring it back to its original colour, um, you know, even on the flares or clear coats gone but there's no rust which is really good and that's that's the one thing that I would have walked away if I saw a stack of rust in this thing I would have walked away straight away and when especially on 80 series and a lot of old vehicles check underneath the rubbers on a lot of your windows especially these rear ones here they get a lot of rust up under here it's very very common um, up on the gutters as well especially if they used to run a roof rack or something like that you'll just scratch the paint off and it'll start to um, blister and stuff like that um, especially in the old 60s and troopies and things like that they actually got a lot of moisture from inside the roof and it went from the inside out on a lot of these gutter roofs on old nissans and toyotas this one's pretty good if you go around the back there's one little dent um, right here that's the only little dent on the whole vehicle a few stone chips and things like that um, all the rear they usually get rust around the rear here as well but it's in pretty good nick this one it's just a lot of um, faded paint which I don't think is too bad at the end of the day yeah, so as you see it's no real show pony but it presents really well and the big thing is there's no rust so at the end of the day I'm gonna be using this as a bit of a daily driver so so long as mechanically right I'm okay with that it's part of that that rear bar which is fine having a good look underneath here because uh, it's worth especially if you see a tow ball fitted you can assume there would have been a bit of towing going on especially when I see some electronic brakes inside the cab um, and there's a bit of rust on the tow ball which shows me he's probably towed a boat at some stage you want to make sure that he hasn't been dunking the rear of the vehicle in the salt water and the rust is pretty much limited just to the tow bar and the tow hitch as well um, the spare tires got a little bit of rust around here as well, but the body and the actual vehicle itself has got none So um, the exhaust as well, they rust um, pretty easily and that's in good nick Inside here, it's nice and clean and that's what you want in the interior of a four-wheel drive, especially an older one um, Usually you'll find on a vehicle of this age that a lot of different mods would have been, you know, put into the dash over 30 years plus you've got you know different switches and um, head units and things like that where you can see people have chopped and changed into the dash and what usually happens you get lots of cracks through the dash um, not to mention holes where switches would have been and just a lot of aftermarket stuff this one's got none of that because it really hasn't had any accessories um, there's been a different head unit put in here of course at one stage um, checking all the buttons even the electric um, aerial works which you know usually don't on an old vehicle like this it's all really clean, which is really cool. Uh, it's got the lamb wool seat covers. Um, and other than that, she's basically stock as in here, which is what I want. And um, it could use it with a bit of a tidy up, a bit of a clean, but that's easy to do. And obviously really cheap. Inside the glove here, I want to show you this because it's pretty cool. Um, first things first. Now, <laughs> here are all of the old manuals. Um, the owner's manual, we've got warranty cards in there. We've got receipts from when it was new. We've got rego papers. Um, service and warranty books, so all the servicing history is in there. You've got extended warranty plan, the Toyota Extra Care, um, all different receipts and, and all that sort of jazz, which shows that this vehicle was really loved. And that's what you want to see, the history of a vehicle like that. And if it comes with this sort of stuff, you know that you're probably buying a pretty good thing. Open this up. There we go. Original Toyota tool kit. There's the jack and tool kit.
Yeah, it's got all the genuine Toyota parts in there. That's pretty cool. Well, there you have it. There's my 80 series, and I reckon to this day, it's probably the best secondhand bargain I've ever bought myself. And um, I'm pretty stoked with it, to be honest with you. And um, I bet you, you guys, you know, you can see a lot of potential in this rig without a doubt. But I want to hear from you guys. What's the best secondhand bargain you've ever come across? Let me know in the comments, and for the best answer, well, I'm gonna send out a Snatch Recovery Kit, a brand new Snatch Recovery Kit for you guys. So let us know in the comments. And for me, well, what do you reckon, Mia? You reckon we go bush? I reckon we do.